Hi Church, so good to see you as we continue our series in the book of Nehemiah. And today I'm looking at chapter 6 verses 15 to chapter 7 verse 4. And this is all about celebrating God's power and guarding against opposition. But let's first remind ourselves of what happened previously in that chapter. And the story is very dramatic indeed, because the opposition to all the work of re-establishing the exiles in Jerusalem and in Judah came to a head. As the wall was nearly complete, the opposition tried desperately all kinds of strategies to stop the project. But the enemy's last-ditch stand failed because of the clear-headedness of Nehemiah, who saw through all the tricks, and most importantly, because of Nehemiah's continuing sensitivity to God's will. So, this is where we pick up the story today, with the triumph of the completion of the wall. Verse 5 states rather modestly, so the wall was completed. And it was completed in an incredibly short time, in 52 days. Clearly, this was a powerful show of God's faithfulness and support for the exiles. And for the time being, it broke the resistance. Verse 15 states, When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their confidence. This was an astonishing turnaround. Up until now, and starting really early on in the book of Ezra, it was the enemies who tried everything really to make Nehemiah and the Jews afraid. And now these same enemies, because they realized that God had done something extraordinary in his community, it was they who were afraid. So we learn that even those who are utterly determined to resist and oppose God's work can be stopped in their tracks by the power of God and the work and example of his community. It can lead to a total reversal of their attitude. If God's hand is on a mission, nobody is able to stop it. But, and here is an important but, Despite this astonishing victory and the fact that everyone seems to see God's power, it is also clear that opposition to the exiles and their mission did not cease. We learn in verses 17 to 19 that opposition continued to be a problem. So immediately following a great victory, not only do we hear of continuing opposition, but we hear about serious disloyalties from within, not from outsiders, but from those inside the community. We hear about a division between Nehemiah and the priestly families, which let Tobiah hinder Nehemiah's leadership and lead some of the people astray. So it makes sense then, then at the beginning of chapter 7, as we continue the story, Nehemiah is very clear that the great victory of completing the wall can quickly be followed by defeat and failure again, if one doesn't ward uh, oneself. Hence, he carefully selects those who guard the city from danger from within and from without. So, what might we be able to learn from all this? What can we learn from this as a community and as individuals on our journey with God? Personally, I'm very struck about the impact of God's power. Nothing can stand against him. And even the fiercest resistance crumbles. But then, victory is never quite complete. Opposition to God continues always and somehow. And of course, that reminds me that we are still waiting for the final victory, for the final return of Jesus Christ. Until then, we experience 
the glory of God, heaven opens um, ever so often for us. But the ultimate victory is not complete yet. But I sense at the same time that we should feel a kind of great encouragement from this amazing victory of God. We have journeyed alongside Ezra and Nehemiah for quite a while now. And today, I think it is right to celebrate a really astonishing victory, despite the severe opposition and against all the odds. Surely, this encourages us to face the unusual challenges we ourselves experience right now. That whatever the circumstances, we can indeed go forward full of confidence as individuals and as a church community on our journey with Christ. Surely, we are also reminded that whatever circumstances, even when celebrating great success, we have to be on our guards as well, because there will always be threats trying to separate us from God, from within and from without. So, let us pray to God. God, we ask you to fill us with great assurance and confidence when we read about the amazing victory of Nehemiah and his community, totally against the odds. You are good. You are faithful. Please, God, remind us of this when we feel weak and we feel challenged. And as we are trying to live out our faith daily, we ask you to always seek your will. We ask you to be on our guards always against anything that undermines or challenges your will. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me.